Right in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get set up with the Google's foundation models within Model Garden and Vertex AI on Google Cloud. So a prerequisite for this, as you might imagine, is you will need a Google Cloud account. If you don't already have one, don't worry, because when you sign up, there is a likelihood or possibility at least that you will be able to have some credit. So I just signed up last week for this and I got a handful of credits that I'm going to be able to use on their platform. So once you're set up, uh, you'll have your list of projects here that you can go ahead, you can make a new project. And the one thing to note is if you're using my first project or for whatever project you set up for that matter, just make sure you go to their dashboard and make sure you enable the APIs that you're going to be using. So as you see here, I have the Vertex AI API set up, Google uh, Storage API. You can enable all recommended APIs. Might be the easiest if you plan on using a handful of these things, but just make sure you go ahead and enable those things. If you don't do that, they won't work. So next, we're going to install the G Cloud CLI. So the reason for this is the way that I have this set up is we're going to be reaching for their credentials uh, globally within our system. So in other words, any project that we have with this setup, you will be able to reach for those credentials and it work. Now, if you want to, uh, you know, make environment variables or change the authentication, uh, change the authentication uh, method later, you can go ahead and do so. But I'm just sort of showing you a way for ease of use. So uh, once you come here, you just select your system, run through the steps. I obviously won't go through all of these. There's a slight different steps for all different uh, systems and different packages that you might need to install. So just find what matches your system, make sure Python's installed, download the package, and just walk through the steps here. So once you have that installed, uh, you can go ahead and authenticate an application and have the default uh, authentication across your system. So you can just go G Cloud Auth application default login, then you'll have a browser window pop up, log in like you would to Google. Then once that's successful, you'll have that saved locally and hopefully you won't have to worry about authentication uh, going forward. So once you have that set up and you've made sure to enable the uh, APIs here, you can go to the model garden again, and you can start to take a look at the different models that are available. So there's quite a few that are available. There's some that still aren't available. So uh, most notably they're, they're unicorn models. So there's sort of a spectrum from gecko all the way up to unicorn with bison right before unicorn, which is what I'm gonna be showing you today. So if we go into Bison for instance, uh, you just go down here, you can sort of see some of the steps to actually set this up. So the thing that I noticed with their um, uh, documentation right now is if we open up the prompt design, this is similar to the playground within OpenAI. If you go and view the code, you don't actually have a Node.js uh, example here. So uh, hopefully something that's coming down the pike, but for those people that work within Node.js, JavaScript developers, I'm going to show you the wrapper that I made and some examples on interacting with a few of their different models that I'm using. So you can uh, go in here and use this if you're a Python developer and you'll have all your uh, the things that you need. You'll have your uh, project ID, the model, and uh, the, the example prompt if you have uh, something within there. And then uh, similarly, you can have the curl request. So I'm actually going to have this open just for a second to show you uh, where you can plug in some of the details that you'll need in some of the examples. So the way to, that I've set this up is I have this parameters uh, object that we are sending to our send request method, which we'll all go through in just a moment. But the things that we'll need once we're authenticated is we'll need our project ID, which you can see here. We'll need the API endpoint, which you see here, and then you'll need the model ID. Now, the other thing with the model ID is, uh, or below the model ID is the instances. So there is a slightly different structure for each of them. So just one thing to note is if you're going through and you know trying out a bunch of different models, there is a different schema that you might have to use. 
So once that's all set up and you have this as an example, all the examples that I have are going to use these parameters. You could further scaffold this out and you know include a .env here and use environment variables if you wanted. Um, but for now, I'm just going to be showing you how to pass these in one by one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our Google Foundation Models JS. So the only dependency that we're going to be using, and I'll just make this a little bigger here and increase the size of everything, is the one thing that we're going to be requiring here within our project is the Google Auth library. So if you reach for GitHub, I'll have all this code here. You can just npm install um, to get the dependency that you need, or if you're following along within the video and you're npm init y and doing it sort of one by one as I show you, um, just make sure to install the Google Auth dependency. So the first thing I'll show you is the utility function. So the main function really is just going to be the send request. These are just sort of help helper functions that you don't actually need for the core logic of interacting with these models. So the first thing we'll do, we'll ins uh, install our dependencies, uh, require our dependencies rather, uh, Google Auth, FS, and Path. Now this is what I've used for our wrapper here. So first we're going to be setting up our authentication, reaching for our access token. So within the library, it has you know the, the it knows to reach first for your local uh, version of all the credentials, and then from there it's going to get an access token, and then that access token is what we're going to be using in our fetch request. So we're sort of uh, creating our fetch request here. Uh, which we're going to use for all our different models here. And then we're going to be passing in that parameters object, which has things like our prompt and other settings that we might want to play with. So it's going to be a post request. This is going to be where we pass in our access token. And then finally, uh, the parameters that we have passed in into the function, we're just going to stringify them for the request. So we'll handle any errors here if they come up, and then if there aren't any errors, we'll res return that response back to our function where we'll console log it out and do a couple other things. So next, I'll just quickly run through write response locally. All this is doing, you don't really need to pay too much attention to it, is we're going to be writing the response that we get back from the API locally to our system. Uh, so just to keep this video simple, I'm just going to be showing you, you know, what the output looks like. And I've found it local just or, or helpful rather to save them locally. Look at the schema, see what's there, see what you can work with while you're starting to play around with these models. And similar to the function above, this one is just going to be for saving code files. So if it detects that there's a piece of code, say JSX, it's going to go in and take that uh, JSX, use it as the file extension, and then use the contents and save it out as a standalone file for their, their coding model that I'm going to be showing you. And that's basically it. So then we're just going to be exporting those to be able to use them in our next examples. So the first one that we're going to be using the model is their text bison model. So like I mentioned, this is like the one below their uh, largest model, at least at present. Uh, so within their Palm 2 uh, umbrella, there's four models from Gecko, two unicorn, and the unicorn model I did try. It isn't available even though it's not listed there yet. So hopefully coming soon. Um, and this is you know what's available to us uh, for now that we can use. So pretty straightforward, we have our API endpoint, we have the project ID where we have this all set up, we have the model ID, we have the uh, instances array that we're gonna be passing in, and in this case, we're gonna be passing in the content, which is essentially like our prompt, our query. Uh, we have our parameters, uh, so you can set the temperature, so how creative uh, you want it to be, the output, and a handful of other things. So what we're gonna be able to do here is once uh, you have that all set up you can just go ahead within your examples folder make sure you're in that folder you can just go node one text bison we can wait uh, a moment for a response and then if we look here in our example output we'll see where that output um, 
file is saved and then you can go ahead and look at the response so if you don't want to look at things within the terminal uh, you can just look here so you can see okay you have this citation metadata i have seen so github links often appear within the citations here uh, safety attributes and whatnot so i'm not sure exactly what all of these things are but i did see you can dial up or down the safety of the responses um, so if that's something that's important to you, you can look into that. And then the other thing to note with the response is as sort of general knowledge with LLMs is they're not 100% uh, accurate. So in this one, no citation and it's actually wrong. So it wasn't version 10, but that's sort of aside the point. Um, you know, this model can do uh, 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 quite a few things um, but just a reminder that you know these things aren't absolute and you know if you're relying on it for facts uh, it's don't <laughs> at least not not yet um, so but the nice thing is is there are citation metadata so there might be a plan if you plan on using this um, you know for things that are potentially facts um, you'll be able to have the citation metadata. So I haven't seen this come up with most of my responses, but I have seen it come up with a handful so far. So definitely something nice to see. So from there, I'm gonna hop into the code bison model. So a lot of these are very similar. Um, this one, we're gonna be requiring the save to code or save code to file uh, for what I had just run through. So if it's JSX or HTML for your query. So in this one, you'll see that the uh, instances array that we're passing in is a little bit different. So we're using prefix instead of content here. So there's a little slight nuances there. Um, so you can swap out your project ID if you have different um, uh, you know configurations uh, for each of them and otherwise you know you can plug this into like an environment variable if you don't want to pass these things in here and make a little uh, tweak to the code but so in this one I'll just say okay write me an encapsulated leaflet focused on San Francisco in a single JSX file so leaflet is a mapping library where you'll be you use a sim, sort of you can think of it as like a Google Maps an open source Google Maps. So I'm asking it to return me that uh, within JSX and with our little helper function here. We'll just wait for a moment. It's a little bit more code or of a response than our last example, but it's still pretty quick. And you can see here, so it saved out our response. We can first take a look at that, uh, or rather this one. And you can see, okay, so the contents there, uh, it's stripping out all of this stuff. Uh, so the JSX, and then it's nicely putting it within a file here that we can use. So sort of a helpful, helpful little uh, function that you might find helpful depending on your use case. So maybe if you're building out like a coding bot or something, um, or coding related, related uh, that might be helpful. And so finally, I'm just going to be showing you their text embeddings model. I'm not going to be going too far into embeddings. You can check out the other videos on my channel. If you're new to uh, all of this and new to embeddings and all of that, I have some examples where I run through embeddings in depth with Pinecone and OpenAI and really break down uh, what's going on and how to use them. But this is just their version of embedding data. So if you're going to be uh, trying to make a, a application that has some sort of semantic search, so say you have like PDFs or uh, text that you want to search within, uh, this might be helpful for you. And so similarly, we could just go node three text embeddings and it will just take a moment and then what's returned, if you're not familiar with it, it will just look like a, a bit of a mess um, potentially. But um, oh, uh, let me just make sure that I have this set up correctly. Let me just, I'll use this. Text embedding gecko, hello world. So essentially what we get risk, uh, a response of is, it, or it should be just an array of different uh, encoded values. So if we go ahead and look at our embeddings here, 
you'll see all these. So I think there's like 736 or something along those lines of values. Uh, depending on the embeddings endpoint, they are a little bit different. I think uh, OpenAI's is around 1500 where you'll get different uh, values representing the piece of text. So that's representing Hello World within an embedding here. So not going to dive uh, too much into embeddings, but that's pretty much it for the video. Uh, this is going to be on GitHub. You can reach for this for some example code. Um, and as always, if you have any questions or have trouble setting this up, uh, leave a question in the comments below. But otherwise, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until the next one.